Hey everyone, happy to have you with us on an all new episode of The American Huddle. Alongside Andy Gresh, I'm Haley Outen. We're headed into week three of the college football season. Hard to believe it's been flying by, but yeah. we've seen some great games so far. We have a lot to look forward to this coming weekend. Starting off on Friday night, Houston hosts Washington State. This game's going to be played at NRG Stadium. Cougs v. Cougs. Andy, what are you expecting to see in this matchup? Well, I expect a wound-up environment in NRG Stadium. It's a Friday night game, so you figure everybody is going to be ready to go on a Friday night. And here's the thing with Washington State. they got three different wide receivers with double-digit catches. So the Houston defense will be stressed in maybe a way they haven't been yet this year. And when you look back the last time the Houston defense played against the air raid offense that Mike Leach and Wazoo will be bringing to town. They give up 605 yards, so there's a lot to clean up. That means Houston's got to run the ball. They've run it for 477 yards in two games. They need another 200 to 250 yard effort to possess the ball to take care of their defense. Andy, get this fun stat. The American is a combined 5-0 and against the Pac-12 since the start of the 2017 season. Well, if I may be so bold, that's because the Pac-12 is a below average power five league. And the stats and the numbers have showed it over the past couple of years. I mean, their best team, arguably, in Washington already has a loss in conference. And Washington State, you know, can Mike Leach get them to 11, 12 wins? Pretty tough up there in Pullman. But, yeah, I mean, again... If sports writers looked at the evidence, not their preconceived notions, then people would already see that the American fares very compa or compares very favorably to the Pac-12. All right, let's move on to Saturday. We have the American Conference opener as Navy hosts ECU. The Mids are coming off an early bye, and the Pirates are coming off some momentum with a home win against Gardner-Webb. How do you expect ECU head coach Mike Houston in his first season heading on the road mm -hmm. and preparing for the triple option offense that well, maybe brings? Well, yeah, it's something, Haley, that he knows. He ran it at two other stops before he got to James Madison and then ECU. So it's an offense he's very familiar with. And I think he understands we're not going to be able to get ready for all of it in a week. But what can we do to try to disrupt it the mu as much as we can? And to me, it's about pressure off the edges at time and making sure you try to hem in the middle. You know, a lot of people, I think, make the mistake of, all right, we're going to take away that middle stuff. We're going to force them outside. If you're taking away the middle stuff, it's going to set up for them to run outside. Maybe if you take away some of the outside stuff, if you have the ability to tackle well, you might be able to slow them down in the middle, whether it's D-line stunts or slants. And let's remember, too, Navy is coming off a bye week. So early on, you have practice, you play a game, you kind of get through that soreness, you get back to work on a week where there's no pressure. To me, Navy has the advantage in this game because of the bye week. A chance for someone to start 1-0 in conference play this weekend. Now taking a look at the rest of the non-conference slate, UCF with the chance to make a pretty big statement against Stanford. And I think the biggest question, Andy, for everybody this week is who will start at quarterback? We saw Brandon Wimbush in week one, Dylan Gabriel in week two, but Daryl Mack Jr. is cleared, he's back, and he's healthy. Who do you expect to see start this game? I still think it's going to be Dylan Gabriel because I wonder about Daryl Mack Jr. in starting him versus playing him. I think you bring him in second quarter, allow him to get some reps, get some series under his belt, and who knows, maybe if that offense sputters a little bit, maybe that's the change that Josh Hypo will go to. But to me, I think you stick with Gabriel or Wimbush if he's ready to go. And then you sort of mix Daryl Mack in very slowly. They've got great depth at UCF. You don't want to ruin it by putting somebody out on the field too early. And when you look at this UCF defense, or excuse me, offense, 28 games in a row they've scored 30 points. So I don't want to say the quarterback doesn't matter, but at least with the way they're rolling, it doesn't matter to this point. And defensively last week, a season-high five sacks, that bodes well for them against the Stanford team who's going to come all the way across the country and play another, another tough battle. They lost to USC last week. UCF has won 16 straight games at home, only trailing Alabama and Clemson for the nation's longest active streak. So we'll see the, what the Knights can do, rather, against Stanford on Saturday. Let's move on and talk about Temple. They're coming off an early bye week as well. They're going to host Maryland. But we saw Rod Carey's team in week one. They put up some big numbers against Bucknell, 695 mm. total yards. How do they switch gears and take on a much tougher opponent in Maryland? Well, I think it's you got to get back to basics. you got to win the battle of special teams. And look, how many times, Haley, have you and I sat here and talked about Temple and said, 
Boy, they're going to win that third phase of the game, and it's going to give them a great chance to stay in the game. That is never more important than this battle against Maryland, who was very impressive last week in steamrolling Syracuse. That said, I like the fact that Rod Carey gets a feel for his team, gets to be able to coach them up, and then gets them ready for an opponent that is going to get the players' attention. It will be really interesting to see how Temple comes out in this game. I do believe it was, what, against Maryland a year ago, the Anthony Russo coming out party? That Maryland's going to be looking at it and saying, all right, that kid skewered us last year. Let's make sure we don't let him carve us up. That's why that third phase of the game becomes more important. I think Maryland, very tough. They have a level jump this year in the ACC. It's been surprising. In Cincinnati, we have the battle for the victory bell as they host Miami of Ohio. The Bearcats, though, they are coming off a tough loss on the road last week to Ohio State, 42 to nothing. How does Cincinnati flip the page and prepare for this next matchup? Well, the question for me, Haley, it's not so much about the opponent because I think Cincinnati is way better than Miami of Ohio. For me, it's his Desmond Ritter okay. I know he left the game against Ohio State with an arm injury. What are you going to get out of him? And if he plays, what version of Desmond Ritter are you going to get? And I want to see this offense bounce back, and I think they will. Michael Warren really got stuffed last week at Ohio State. I expect that run game to get going. That'll take some pressure off of Desmond Ritter. For me, I'm not worried about the opponent for Cincinnati so much as I am Cincinnati themselves getting back on track. Tulsa was able to head out west and bring back that first win of the season after they took on San Jose State. Now they have a big Oklahoma matchup. You expect fans to get up for this one as they welcome Oklahoma State. What are you expecting to see? Well, I'm hoping that Chapman Stadium has got some bodies in it and that people are wound up because Tulsa's got a competitive football team. You know, they play a lot of man coverage, which is very interesting for their defense. And Oklahoma State, we know the Mike Gundy and that mullet. They want to be flinging the pill all over the lot. So this will test the Tulsa defense and whether they need to start to mix in zone against maybe some better teams or do they have the ability to play man and be able to bring pressures. Look, Mike Gundy's teams can score. So if you're Tulsa, you either got to possess it and score or you just got to get into a shootout and try to score with them. I look for two players for Tulsa to really step up. Running back Shamari Brooks, Travis Gibson, the defensive end. Those two guys need to be big against Oklahoma State for them to have a chance to win. All right, let's take a look at some of the evening slate. South Carolina State at USF. Charlie Strong mentioned this week in his press conference that the quarterback competition has been reopened up. You have Blake Barnett. Jordan McLeod, how does that fuel these two guys heading into this week's matchup? Yeah, I, I think what it tells you is, is that Charlie Strong is sick of losing and it's, okay, we need to find a way to fix our offense because I think defensively they are sort of making some strides. But that said, Charlie Strong's got to put the imprint on the football team and the way he can do it is by opening up that quarterback competition. Here's the thing that I think Charlie Strong is thinking here, Haley. You open up the quarterback competition, that means you've opened up every spot on the football field for competition, and it sort of puts all of the players on notice. All right, Memphis at South Alabama. Running back Patrick Taylor did not play last weekend. We're not sure if he's going to play this week either, but regardless, the Tigers still put up 55 points against Southern. But Andy, on the defensive side, they gave up 24. Is that too much? Um, it was surprising that they gave up 24, but it was also really surprising what they did against Ole Miss and holding them to 10. So, you know, I've been on that Memphis defense. This is an opportunity here to show that they're continuing to make strides and can complement what the offense can do. You mentioned no Patrick Taylor. Kenneth Gainwell jumped in, 85 yards, a touchdown receiving, and two touchdowns rushing. So it seems like Mike Norvell can figure that end of it out. I think they'll put forth a representative effort here at South Alabama. It's in Lad Peebles Stadium. Always good to go on the road. It's a different kind of test. I think the defense will be up to the challenge, but more importantly, I expect Memphis to run the ball against South Alabama for a win. All right, Texas State at SMU. We saw running back Xavier Jones have a breakout week this week in the American. He was named the Offensive Player of the Week, 127 yards and three touchdowns, marking his second straight game, Andy, with three scores. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing from this SMU team here early in the season? Well, they got the ability to throw the ball. There's confidence at quarterback. And I think that around the quarterback, you have guys who are getting much more acclimated into Sonny Dyke's system and understanding what he wants out of them. We know that if you've got somebody who can fling the rock, Sonny Dyke's system is going to put up points wherever he is, whatever team he is coaching. So I expect Texas State 
to be hurting in a big way uh, against SMU this weekend. Texas State just had a coaching change. It looks like things are a little messy down there. This is a game where SMU can hang a big number and say, we're here, we're good, we're ready to play. And, of course, the quarterback, Michelle, is a big part of that. SMU looking for their first 3-0 start since 1984. Last but certainly not least, Tulane welcomes Missouri State. The Green Wave coming off that tough loss on the road to Auburn last week. What lessons can be taken from that game? I think that they know they can play with a big boy now, or at least a big name brand, let's call it, in terms of Auburn. So I expect the confidence in that football team to go up. I expect them to come out and really rip it in the first two quarters. What I love to see out of Tulane against a Missouri State team is go out and score 35 to 42 points in the first half and allow Willie Fritz to be able to kind of ease some of the guys out of the lineup, get some experience for some backups, but be able to take care of his starting group as they get ready to head into conference play. All right, well, we are looking forward to week three of the college football season. Hope you are, too. Make sure to follow along on all of our coverage on Facebook as well as on Twitter at American underscore FB. On behalf of Andy Gresh, I'm Haley Out, and we'll see you back here next week.